Hi there, welcome to the exam AZ-900 Microsoft Azure Fundamental Study Guide. This is episode 16 of 50. The title is Azure IoT Products. My name is Tim Warner. Today's objective, of course, comes from the 2020 latest version of the AZ-900 outline from Microsoft Worldwide Learning. We start with Describe Core Solutions and Azure Management Tools, pass through Describe Core Solutions available on Azure, and what we're going to do today is describe the benefits and usage of the following Azure Internet of Things, or IoT products, IoT Hub, IoT Central, and Azure Sphere. As you can see on the right side of the slide, you can download the Excel file into which I've populated the table of contents for this study guide at timw.info forward slash az900. What is IoT? Well, I remember well over 10 years ago, I was in Las Vegas for a Cisco Live conference, and that was the first time I'd ever seen the term Internet of Things. And you know, to be perfectly candid, I thought at the time that that was some Cisco marketing buzzword that was going to come and go within a year. But I was dead wrong. IoT is definitely here to stay. The Internet of Things refers to any device that has a sensor on it, some kind of sensor that can take in analog data and transfer it into a digital signal and then use an onboard network connection, normally a Wi-Fi radio, to transmit that data to a central server. We're talking about business hardware, air conditioning units that read temperature, maybe a water treatment plant that has water tanks with IoT sensors that pick up water level and, again, analog to digital translation and then to send that data into a central server. Elevators could be IoT enabled to detect motion. Rooms with present sensors. I mean, in my own home, I could think of any number of IoT devices. Our washer and dryer, for heaven's sake, are IoT devices. They can make a call over the internet via an onboard Wi Fi radio to the manufacturer to send telemetry information, for example. You probably have a number of IoT devices in your home and you may not even be fully aware of it. A little scary, right? The Raspberry Pi is a common platform for IoT learning and experimentation, but actually it's crossed over into business. It's a $35, $40 computer. You can see it on the right side of the slide. It's about the size of your palm. Full computer with RAM, CPU, storage, the whole thing. And that picture actually is showing a Raspberry Pi that's connected to a temperature sensor. Challenges in business with IoT is just could be summed up with lack of standardization. And the fact that because IoT hardware vendors don't currently have much of a standard, there's questions of you or your business using IoT enabled appliances and the vendor going out of business and then never issuing any firmware updates. And if there happen to be security vulnerabilities in the IoT device, you see how that can turn into a bad situation very quickly. Microsoft is looking to address that and that's on deck for our AZ-900 objectives today. Let's proceed. First of all, in Microsoft Azure, we have the Azure IoT Hub, and this is a cloud-hosted managed service. Its basic value proposition is it serves as a two-way communication vehicle with your IoT devices. That is, you can connect your IoT devices to the IoT Hub that runs in the Azure Cloud, and you can also send data from the Hub back to the devices. This traffic routing, you're getting telemetry data. Telemetry refers to remote measurement. So you might work in an oil field and your oil drills may be IoT enabled and they send a constant stream of data to potentially IoT Hub. IoT Hub, therefore, is gallable, so it can receive millions and millions of these telemetry messages a day. Pretty amazing, huh? As I said, IoT Hub has as one of its value propositions bidirectional communication. So you can do some IoT device management from IoT Hub, provisioning devices, updates. You represent your physical devices that are out there in the world, out in your business environment, or maybe even at home. Digitally in Azure, you can look in the Azure documentation and learn about. Lastly, IoT Hub integrates with another Microsoft IoT family product called IoT Edge. As you can see here in the URL down in the lower right will take you to the page from which I borrowed this Microsoft graphic. IoT Edge helps businesses that have invested heavily in IoT because as I said, the more IoT devices you're looking to manage, depending upon what those devices are sending telemetry wise, it could be an enormous traffic stream and you may not want hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of devices sending their telemetry directly over the internet into your IoT hub. So your Azure IoT Edge 
edge device is going to be within your business network perimeter and it will serve as a target for all that telemetry data coming from your IoT devices. The IoT Edge has a bunch of different modules that can communicate with different types of hardware and the value proposition here is that you can filter the data, you can anonymize it if you want to send the data to your data scientist team for machine learning purposes and maybe they don't want to see certain data fields so you can run queries against the data, you can scrub it, you can clean it and then and only then you can have IoT Edge send or forward the data into your IoT hub that runs in Azure. IoT Central is an application development platform that's cloud hosted. We could call it a managed IoT application platform where businesses can leverage IoT where they want to control their devices and control the data that's coming out of their IoT devices, but they want to build an entire application for that instead of just pulling the raw telemetry data. And to help developers with that, IoT Central includes a whole bunch of built-in application templates divided by industry. You might be in the legal industry or the healthcare industry, and you may get some good ideas and save your developers quite a bit of work and study by building your solution on those templates, but you also can build your IoT application from scratch using a number of what Microsoft calls solution accelerators that are components or modules inside the IoT Central ecosystem. Lastly, we have Azure Sphere, which is a really, how can I best describe this? Well, it's an exciting product, but it's pretty bold too. What we're doing here, what Microsoft is doing, is taking a step toward Internet of Things device standardization. Remember I mentioned the biggest problem we have with IoT is that there are so many vendors making these circuit boards with no real standardization in how they function, and so they're inconsistently updated, inconsistently managed, and that could present very very grave security vulnerabilities. So what Microsoft is actually doing is laying out a specification for Azure Sphere certified microcontrollers or the hardware that would be the kernel of an IoT enabled device. There's an operating system based on Linux, interestingly enough, called Azure Sphere OS. Many of these IoT capable devices have enough compute to where they can actually run a very small operating system. You're not gonna have the overhead to run Windows, hence the decision to do Linux. And then for the software or the application layer, we have the Application Sphere Security Service, which gives you tight coupling between the hardware and the software to ensure, for instance, that only signed and valid code is allowed to execute on your IoT devices. Now let me take you out into a demo. I want to show you just a little bit, give you a sneak preview about how Azure IoT Hub works. This is going to be a very quick high-level overview just to give you a little bit of the flavor of how IoT Hub works in the Microsoft Azure Cloud. As you can see here, we're looking at the overview blade of an IoT Hub resource that I just created in my subscription. As we know, Azure Resource Manager gives you a bunch of shared features like role-based access control, taxonomic tags, the ability to look at service-related events, pricing tiers, consumption-based modeling, etc. But I'm going to take us right down here under the Explorer section. We'll go to IoT Devices. And I had added in a device to represent my Raspberry Pi. Remember, Raspberry Pi is a microcontroller, very low price. A lot of the people in the maker community, including my nine-year-old daughter, enjoy playing with these a lot because you can do real Internet of Things things. If we select my Raspberry Pi, we can see some of its authentication data. In other words, the device ID, how my IoT hub is representing this device. We've got two private access keys, including connection strings. The connection string is particularly important because you'll embed this value, one of them. These are primary or secondary or equivalent and interchangeable but you add that into your source application that runs on the device, and that's how the device handshakes and works with the Internet of Things hub. I'd mentioned the idea of the device twin or Azure Digital Twins. You can see that representation in JavaScript object notation here in this blade. Now for this demo, I'm actually using the Raspberry Pi Azure IoT Online Simulator. You can find that in the Azure IoT Hub documentation. And you can see on the left, I've got a schematic diagram that shows an emulated, or it's simulated actually, Raspberry Pi. I don't know what version of Pi it is. It doesn't really matter for our purposes. But it's connected to an Adafruit, again, a simulated representation of an Adafruit temperature, pressure, 
and humidity. I think those are the three metrics that that sensor captures every so often. And this sample code you see in the upper right hand pane, all it's doing is periodically taking a reading fictional, of course, of temperature, pressure, and humidity. And every time it takes a reading, it lights this LED. And then what I've done in the code on line 15 is I pasted in the connection string from my IoT hub in Azure. That's all we need to do. We can presume that this device is available for an internet connection to reach my Azure IoT hub. And then I clicked start to start the code. You might be wondering, okay, cool. How do we read the data in Azure IoT Hub. And for that, what I've done is I'm using Visual Studio Code, which if you don't have it, you should download it. It's a really fine and capable code and text editor. It's from Microsoft. It runs cross-platform Mac OS, Windows, Linux. And it has an extension model here where you can download and install first and third party extensions. And this is from Microsoft. The extension pack is called Azure IoT Tools, as you see here. And after you've loaded the extension, you'll want to take a look at the output window, as you can see on my screen. Let me bring it up real high. And also, let me open up my Explorer here, because when you install the tools, you get the Azure IoT Hub extension, which you can see here. And if you open the menu, you can connect to your IoT Hub and authenticate. You'll be required to authenticate to your Azure subscription, of course. But then you'll have your Hub, and it'll show any devices that are associated with the Hub. You can refresh by clicking the little Refresh button. And what I've done on my Raspberry Pi, I've right-clicked it and gone to Start Monitoring Built-in Event Endpoint. And now in the Output menu, it looks like the sample is every two seconds. A fictional reading takes place and the results of that message come into my output here and it looks like we've got the device ID, the message ID, the temperature, and the humidity and then whether there's an alert. Back in the application source code, I think it alerts for temperatures over 30. Yeah, here's one down here where it's showing temperature alert true because the temperature is above 30. See how that works? Learning resources from the Microsoft documentation. To learn more about IoT in general, go to timw.info forward slash IoT1. For the Azure IoT product portfolio, timw.info forward slash IoT2. And for more information on the Raspberry Pi, that's actually not a Microsoft link. That takes you to the Raspberry Pi place. <laughs> that's timw.info forward slash IoT3. Thanks, as always, for joining me, and thanks for bearing with me. I've been updating one of my books, so the my rate of production for these AZ900 videos has slowed a bit. You can reach me at Twitter at Tech Trainer Tim. All of my Pluralsight courses are at timw.info forward slash ps. My website's techtrainertim.com. Take good care.